it does coming at it from a musician's point of view, right. and also interest in film and years of experience of writing about music and film. That's how I knew Doug. I mean, he was, uh, I thought, one of the really good writers in the country, possibly in the world, about uh, this particular art form. So I was reading his work uh, before I met Doug for many years. Right, right. And that's why I invited him in, based on the quality of his work. I didn't know Doug, I just knew the name. Spoken on the phone for interviews, but nothing beyond that. Yeah. I, I wrote for, you know, when I was in college, I started writing for a magazine called Film Score Monthly, which covers film and television music, and that was another shot in the dark thing where I sent out an email to someone and said, would you let me try an article? And it worked out well enough that they invited me to do more, and eventually got to the point where I was yeah. interviewing composers, and how did I met that way? It's such a small world. Yeah, yeah. And that everybody tends to know what's going on in that world, right. who's writing what, and, and what they bring to uh, the discussion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, you know, Howard, you, when he was in, in the process of creating these scores, often used to refer to himself as feeling like Frodo, that he had this enormous responsibility and was being urged along by the filmmakers. And I think in turn I had a little bit of that sense as well where I was learning this world and being, you know, supported by wonderfully gifted people that had done some of these type of things before. So there was a lot of, you know, here Doug, you should do it this way type of moments. But and, and Doug also had a good sense of the history of, of film and music. And it's, it's important to know that, you know, where things relate to and historically and the foundation of the, of the art form. Right. Yeah. On the side. It's it's uh, just the, it, it is just you know, the words on the page. I, I'm an avid reader, and so uh, the feeling I get from reading a good book, which I'm sure you've done or anybody's done, or and, and what I'm doing uh, essentially uh, is just expressing those ideas in music. I mean, you you could sit down and write a short uh, piece, a few pages about a book you uh, read. Well, I'm doing that in a composition and I'm expressing ideas that I feel about things like uh, Frodo's relationship with Sam or Frodo and Gandalf or the Shire or the Fellowship I mean they're based into the story and you can bring those things out uh, in, in musical uh, terms of it but you have to do it as a true expression from your heart and then the idea comes out and then you have to de you develop the idea I had a gift really I had a great book from a, one of the classic novels of the 20th century, and I had a great uh, filmmaker, Peter Jackson. So not only I had the book and I had the realization of the book. I didn't have to even imagine who these who Gandalf was. I could see Ian McKellen as Gandalf, mm -hmm. a great Shakespearean actor. So I had both. I could see them moving, and I could read about them in Tolkien's book. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't even know that it was finished. I mean, they, they, didn't, they just sort of dragged me away from it. They said, Stop. So, no, I, I wasn't really aware that it had ended. Yeah, not really sure. Yet. Uh, yes, um, Of all the themes you composed, uh, do either of you have a favorite? Uh, I, you know, the, the world is so vast, it's such an epic story, it's such a fantastic story, but I love the small moments, and uh, I, I mentioned, you know, the relationship of Sam and Frodo is such a wonderful uh, relationship, and so I, I always felt that it, those small uh, relationships and the writing that I would do based on those gestures was really at the heart of the story. Like, if I could really work with those characters and the way they're, you know, a lot of it was just... The way the way they looked, and the way I mean the way they jet the way they looked at each other. I mean the the, the scene where Frodo says, uh, "I will carry the ring. I will take the ring." I mean if you look at that scene and how it's cut, everything is in that. The whole story is in that scene. The way Gandalf looks at Frodo, uh, the way Aragorn smiles, and Gimli chimes in, and Legolas. You know it's just it's all happening right there. So 
So if you can, and that was actually quite a difficult scene to write, and I think I did it a few times until I finally got it. But I mean, you know, it's just because it's just finding all the right gestures and the rhythms and the music had to be just the right tempo and have just the right approach to all everything visually, but had to capture the essence of the scene, you know, but, but so I think it's all based in these little, these little gestures, the heart of it. talk about that because uh, Alan Lee uh, was actually he's the great Tolkien illustrator he's from Devon England and uh, he's been illustrating uh, Tolkien's stories for many years before Lord of the Rings and actually when Peter Jackson and Fran Walsh and Philip went when they started off on the journey they contacted many of the great uh, Tolkien thinkers around the world artists in particular to come to New Zealand and work on the film. And the first person, one of the first people I met in New Zealand was Alan Lee. Uh, and he was sat in a room about this size and every inch of the wall was covered with his sketches. And he just was in there drawing and creating all these uh, worlds uh, for the film. And, and, uh, you, and, so, uh, and, and also uh, John Howe, an, another great Tolkien illustrator, he lives in uh, Neuchatel, Switzerland. And he moved to New Zealand as well. And Alan would do all the beautiful mystique and the mystery of Middle Earth. And Alan, and John Howe uh, is, is, is uh, an expert in medieval armor and armaments and would draw the dragons, the devils, and the monsters, you know, of, of, of Middle Earth. And, and he was more into the armor and the battles look of it. And, um, and so between the two of them, uh, we got to know them over the years, and, and when we did the uh, Lord of the Rings Symphony, uh, they both contributed their beautiful artwork and sketches, black and white pencil sketches that we used in the concerts. And then when we started the book, uh, we asked them if they would like to contribute anything to the book, and they were so generous and incredible. And so, I mean, this, the cover is an original Alan Lee. I mean, that he had drawn this, uh, and we found it, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. You know, I love the image. That particular imagery is incredible, and that part of the story is resonant. And and we talked to Alan about using that image, and then he said, oh, I'll draw you a new one, because it was actually part. It was a small part of a larger. I saw it, and it was. He said, no, no, we'll make a new one. So he drew a new one for the cover. And then uh, John Howe contributed a lot of artwork to the piece as well. So in the book, there's uh, out, they're both from those two artists. There's uh, sketches and, that have never been uh, published before. Yeah, and so, uh, yeah, John and Alan were both incredibly help, uh, helpful and, and just complete gentlemen about everything. They essentially opened up their archives and said, take what you want, you know, please look through everything. Um, even the cover, as Howard said, we were trying, you know, other versions of this that we had found in the archive, and we sort of had uh, Alan copied on all these emails. He's down in New Zealand right now working on another project I'm sure you've heard of. Um, but after about the 19th email, we got finally one back that said, I'll just draw you a new one. <laughs> a couple of days later, this showed up in, in the email box. 